Hey, I'm Mandy from Deep Lizard. In this episode, we'll demonstrate how to use a convolutional neural network for inference to predict on image data using TensorFlow's integrated Keras API. Last time, we built and trained our first CNN against cat and dog image data, and we saw that the training results were great with the model achieving 100% accuracy on the training set. However, it lagged behind by quite a good bit at only 70% accuracy on our validation set. So that tells us that the model wasn't generalizing as well as we hoped, but nonetheless, we are going to use our model now for inference to predict on cat and dog images in our test set. Given the less than decent results that we saw from the validation performance, our expectation is that the model is not going to do so well on the test set either. It's probably going to perform at around the same 70% rate. But this is still going to give us exposure about how we can use a CNN for inference using the Keras Sequential API. All right, so we are back in our Jupyter Notebook and we need to make sure that we have all the code in place from the last couple of episodes as we will be continuing to make use of both our model that we built last time as well as our test data from whenever we prepared the data sets. So the first thing we're going to do is get a batch of test data from our test batches and then we're going to plot that batch. Uh, we're going to plot the images specifically and then we're going to print out the corresponding labels for those images. And we're using, before we do that, just a reminder this plot images function that we introduced in the last couple of episodes. All right, so if we scroll down, we have our test batches. Recall we had the discussion about why the image data looks the way that it does in terms of the color being skewed last time. But we can see that uh, just by looking, even though we have kind of distorted color, we have, uh, these are all actually cats here. And by looking at the corresponding label for these images, we can see that they are all labeled with the one hot encoded vector of one zero, which we know is the label for cat. So if you're wondering why we have all cats as our first 10 images uh, in our first batch here, that is because recall whenever we created the test set, we specified that we did not want it to be shuffled. And that was so that we could do the following. If we come to our next cell and we run testbatches.classes, then we can get a array that has all of the corresponding labels for each image in the test set. So given that we have access to the unshuffled labels for the test set, that's why we don't want to shuffle the test set directly because we want to be able to have this one-one direct mapping from the unshuffled labels to the uh, test data set. And if we were to shuffle the test data set every time we generated a batch, then we wouldn't be able to have the correct mapping between labels and samples. So we care about having the correct mapping because later after we get our predictions from the model, we're going to want to uh, plot our predictions to a confusion matrix. And so we want the corresponding labels that um, belong to the samples in the test set. All right, so next we're actually going to go ahead and obtain our predictions by calling model.predict just as we have in earlier episodes for other data sets. And to X, we are specifying our test batches, so all of our test data set. And we are choosing uh, verbose to be zero to get no output whenever we run our predictions. So here we are just printing out the rounded predictions from the model. So the way that we can read this is first, each one of these arrays is a prediction for a single sample. So if we just look at the first one, this is the prediction for the first sample in the test set. So this one, wherever there is a one with each prediction is the one, is the index for the output class that had the highest probability from the model. So in this case, we see that the zeroth index had the highest probability. So we can just say uh, the, the label that the model predicted for this first sample was a zero because we see that there is a one here in the zeroth index. And if we look at the first element, or if we look at the first label here, up here for our first 
test sample, it is indeed a zero. So we can eyeball that and see that the model did accurately predict uh, all the way down to here because that's the first one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so, but then uh, whenever we see that the model predicted the first index to be the highest probability, that means that the, pro that the model predicted an output label of a one. And so that corresponds to dog. So it's hard for us to kind of draw an overall conclusion about the uh, prediction accuracy for this test set, just eyeballing the results like this. But if we scroll down, then we know that we have the tool of a confusion matrix that we can use to make visualizing these results much easier, like we've seen in previous episodes of this course already. So we are going to do that now. We're going to create a confusion matrix using this confusion matrix function from scikit-learn, which we've already been introduced to, and we are passing in our true labels using testbatches.classes. Recall that we just touched on that a few minutes ago. And for our predicted labels, we are passing in the predictions from our model. We are getting the, we're actually passing in the index of each, we're actually using argmax to pass in the index of where the most probable prediction was from our predictions list. So this is something that we've already covered in previous episodes for why we do that. So if we run that, we're now going to bring in this plot confusion matrix, which we've discussed is directly from Scikit-Learn's website. Link to that is in the corresponding blog for this episode on deeplizard.com. This is just going to allow us to plot our confusion matrix in a moment. And now if we look at the class indices, we see that cat is uh, first and dog is second. So we just need to look at that so that we understand in which order we should put our plot labels uh, for our confusion matrix. And next we call plot confusion matrix and pass in the confusion matrix itself, as well as the labels for the confusion matrix and a title for the entire matrix. So let's check that out. All right. So from what we learned about how we can easily interpret a confusion matrix, we know that we can just look at this diagonal here running from top left to bottom right to see what the model predicted correctly. So not that great. The model is definitely overfitting at this point. So like I said, if this was a model that we were really concerned about, then we would definitely want to combat that overfitting problem. But for now, we are going to move on to a new model using a pre-trained state-of-the-art model called VGG16 in the next episode so that we can see how well that model does on classifying images of cats and dogs. By the way, we are currently in Vietnam filming this episode. If you didn't know, we also have a vlog channel where we document our travels and share a little bit more about ourselves. So check that out at Deep Lizard Vlog on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode, along with other resources available on deeplizard.com. And check out the Deep Lizard Hive Mind, where you can gain exclusive access to perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.